what's going on everybody? Chris here from Project Option and in this options trading strategies video I'm going to teach you about the short iron butterfly strategy. So first we're going to talk about the general characteristics of the strategy then we're going to look at a hypothetical example and we're going to look at the expiration risk profile graph so you can see what the strategy's performance looks like at expiration. And then lastly, we're going to look at three real short iron butterfly trade examples so that you can see how the strategy performs as the stock price is moving through time. So let's get right into it. All right, so selling iron butterflies, or a short iron butterfly, consists of simultaneously selling a call input at the same strike price, essentially a straddle, while also purchasing an out-of-the-money call input, which is a strangle, against the short options. So another way to conceptualize this trade is by selling an at-the-money call spread and an at-the-money put spread. Now, typically the width of both spreads will be the same, in which case you'll have the same amount of risk on both sides. So we'll get to that in a minute. So the maximum profit potential of the trade is the credit received times 100. So if you sell a short iron butterfly for $10, then your maximum profit is $10 times 100 or $1,000 per iron butterfly. Now the maximum loss potential is going to be the width of the widest spread minus the credit received times 100. So as I said before, you'll typically have a short call spread and short put spread that are the same width, but if you do have if you do structure it in a way where one of the short spreads has a wider strike width, then that side of the trade will actually have more risk. Now the break-even prices are going to be the short strike plus the credit received and the short strike minus the credit received. So while you want that stock price to stay right near your short strike as time passes, you actually have a wider profitability range because that credit you received gives you some room to move. Now the estimated probability of profit for a short iron butterfly is typically between 50 and 60 percent when you're when you're selling wide spreads. Now if you sell a very very narrow iron butterfly then you really have a very narrow range of profitability and your probability of profit will be lower. So that 50 and 60 percent level is really for wider iron butterflies. Now the resulting position ex after expiration depends on if one of your spreads is entirely in the money or if only one of the short options is in the money. So if either spread is entirely in the money then no stock position is taken because that short and long option will offset. Now if only the short call is in the money at expiration, then you'll be assigned negative 100 shares of stock per short call. Now that means you'll be short 100 shares of stock per short call. Now if the, long, if the short put is in the money at expiration, then you'll be assigned plus 100 shares of stock per short put. Now in regards to assignment risk, the short iron butterfly strategy does have a short call and a short put component, so if the short call is deep in the money before expiration, the potential assignment risk is negative 100 shares per contract. Now if the short put is in the money before expiration, the assignment risk is plus 100 shares of stock per contract. So if you, know, you have a stock price that moves significantly away from the short strike, then you do have to watch out for assignment risk because if one of those short options is deep in the money, then there's the potential that you might be assigned early on that option. All right, so now let's go ahead and construct a hypothetical short iron butterfly trade from the following option chain. So at the time of these option prices, let's say the stock price is currently at $300, and we believe the stock price will remain fairly close to $300 over the next X, X number of days. Now, to construct an iron butterfly, we're going to sell the 300 put and the 300 call, and then we're going to buy the 250 put and the 350 call. So we're essentially buying, we're selling the 300 straddle and we're buying the 250, 350 strangle. Now if you want to conceptualize the trade as put spreads and call spreads, then we're selling the 300, 250 put spread and we're selling the 300, 350 call spread. Now for this trade we're going to collect a net credit of $22.94. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the expiration risk profile graph for this position. All right, so in this graph, we're looking at the potential profits and losses at expiration based on various stock prices. So we can also see our strikes that are used in this strategy. So we have the short put and short call struck at $300, and then we have a long put at $250, and the long call at $350. So as we can see here, our maximum profit potential is 
$2,294, which is the credit we received times 100, and we realize that if the stock price is right at 300 at expiration. Now obviously that's a very, very low probability scenario because there's only one specific price that we can realize maximum profit at. So realizing maximum profit on a short iron butterfly strategy is very, very rare. However, since you collect such a large credit, you can still make a very, very healthy profit if the stock is anywhere near that $300 strike price. So in this case, we're looking at a profitability range between 27706 and 32294. Now those are our break-even prices, which are solved for by just subtracting the credit from the short strike and also adding the credit to the short strike. So we have a nice wide range of profitability there. Now, if we can see, our maximum loss potential is $2,706, and that occurs if the stock price is below $250 or above $350 at expiration. Now, that maximum loss comes from the fact that we have $50 wide put spreads and $50 wide call spreads, and we collected $22.94 for that. So, since the width of the spreads is the same on both sides, we have the same risk on the upside and downside. So... To solve for our maximum loss potential, we take the $50 wide spread, subtract the credit of $2,294, multiply that by 100, which gives us $2,706. All right, before getting into the real trade examples, let's go ahead and quickly discuss the short iron butterflies Greek exposures, as this will help you understand how the strategy performs before expiration. So in regards to delta, a short iron butterfly typically begins with a delta near zero, because you're usually going to sell an at-the-money straddle and you're usually going to buy equidistant wings from that short straddle. So, in other words, if you sell a 300 straddle and you want to make a 25-point wide iron condor, you would buy the 325 call and the 275 put. And, in general, this is going to keep your deltas near zero. Now, you can structure a short iron butterfly directionally by either opening up one of those long options. So let's say you have a 25 point wide short call spread and a 100 point wide short put spread. You obviously have more risk on the downside and that'll give you a slightly bullish bias. Now in regards to gamma, a short iron butterfly position has negative gamma. Now that means when the stock price rises away from your short strike, a short iron butterfly position becomes more short because its position delta will be negative. And on the other hand, when the stock price falls below the short strike of the iron butterfly, the short iron butterfly position becomes more long because its delta will be more long, more positive. Now, an easy way to conceptualize that is for maximum profit to occur, you want the stock price to be right at your short strike at expiration. So if the stock price rises above your short strike, you want it to come back down, and that is represented by your negative delta. And if the stock price falls below your short strike, you want the stock to rise back up to your short strike, which is represented by the positive delta. All right, in regards to theta, a short iron butterfly position has positive theta because we are net short options. And anytime you're net short options, you want the option prices to decrease because that'll lead to profits for you because you can purchase those options back at a lower price or they expire worthless and then you realize the maximum profit potential. So as time passes, the extrinsic value of options decays over time and that leads to decreasing option prices, which is of course great for an iron butterfly seller because we're net short options. So theta being positive means that time is working for you in this position. Now, a short iron butterfly has negative vega, and that's because since we're net short options, an increase in implied volatility represents that option prices are getting more expensive, which obviously leads to losses for a short option position. Now, on the other hand, a decrease in implied volatility indicates that option prices are falling, which is obviously a great thing for a short iron butterfly trader. So when we put all these Greeks together, we learn that a short iron butterfly position can make money in two ways. The first way is from the passage of time, since it has positive theta, and the second way is from an, a decrease in implied volatility, which is represented by the negative vega. Now, there's two ways a short arm butterfly can lose money, and that's from a large stock price movement in either direction or an increase in implied volatility. So what you really want to happen here is you want the stock price to remain right near your short strike, and you want implied volatility to decrease. 
Now, on the other hand, if the stock price makes a move in either direction, you still could actually make money because that positive theta could offset those directional losses. So all of these things combined makes a short iron butterfly a high probability trade. So let's go ahead and take a look at some real examples so that you can see how the strategy performs when the stock price is changing. All right, so example trade number one. We're going to look at an iron butterfly that breaks even, and that's when the stock price is right near one of the break-even prices at expiration. So here is the setup. The initial stock price is 105.79, and to construct our iron butterfly, we're going to sell the 106 call and put, and then we're going to buy the 97 put and the 112 call. Now, all of these options expire in 45 days. Now to enter this position, we're going to collect a net credit of $4.42, which brings our break-even prices to $110.42 and $101.58. So that's the short strike plus the credit and the short strike minus the credit. Now our maximum profit potential in this case is the credit of $4.42 times 100, which is $442. Now the maximum loss potential is going to be $158 on the upside, since we have a $6 wide call spread and we collected $4.42. So 6 minus 4.42 times 100 is $158. Now on the downside, we have a $9 wide put spread. Now remember I said that whatever side has the wider spread has more loss potential, and this demonstrates how that works. So we have a $9 wide put spread, and since we collected a $4.42 credit, that leaves our, our max loss potential to the downside at $458. So with this particular trade, we have a slightly, bear, or slightly bullish bias because we would rather see the stock price increase than decrease since we can lose more money when the stock price decreases. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens to this position over time. All right, so in the top part of the graph here, we're looking at the changes in the stock price, and then we're looking at the stock price relative to our short call and put, the long put, the long call, and our break-evens for the iron butterfly. So we can see all of the, the strategy's components alongside the stock price. On the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the actual price of the iron butterfly. So when it decreases from our entry price, we'll have profits, and when it increases in value from our entry price, we'll have losses. So in this particular example, we can see that the stock price is in between our break-even points for almost the entire period. And as we can see, the short iron butterfly actually did lose value over time, and that can be explained by the decrease in extrinsic value as time passes. So that's that positive theta working for us. Now, unfortunately, the stock price was right near our upper break-even of 110.42 at expiration, which means that that short 106 call was worth about the same amount that we collected for the entire iron fly. So since we collected $4.42 in this case, and that short call expired with a value of $4.42, that left this whole iron fly position at a break-even point. Now, all of the other options expired worthless, but that short call was enough to you know, offset any profits or losses. So in this case, since the short 106 call was in the money at expiration and that whole entire call spread was not in the money, then this position would actually expire to negative 100 shares of stock because a short call option expires to negative 100 shares of stock. So if you did not want a short stock position from this iron butterfly, you would have to buy back that short call before expiration. So this example just goes to show that you know if the stock price is near one of your break-even prices at expiration, you're not going to have any significant profits or losses on the position because one of those short options expired with the equivalent value of your initial credit. All right, so example trade number two. We're going to look at a maximum loss iron butterfly. Now here's the setup. The initial stock price is $74.44, and we're going to sell the 75 call and 75 put, and then we're going to buy the 70 put and the 80 call. So in this example, we have a $5 wide call spread and a $5 wide put spread, which means our maximum loss is going to be the same on both sides. Now for this iron butterfly, we're going to collect a credit of $3.47. And that brings our break-even prices to $78.47 on the upside and $71.53 on the downside. Now the maximum profit potential is $3.47 times 100, which comes out to $347. Now our maximum loss potential is the $5 spread width on both sides, 
minus $3.47 times 100, which comes out to $153. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this position over time. All right, so as we can see here in the top part of the graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative, relative to our short iron butterfly components and the break-even prices. And in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the actual value of that short iron fly. So as we can see here, the stock price started at $74.44 and pretty much just rallied the entire time we had this trade on. Now at expiration, our short 75.80 call spread was entirely in the money and therefore that call spread expired to a value of $5. Now since we sold this iron fly for $3.47, we realize our maximum loss potential of $1.53 per spread or $153 overall. So this example just shows that if you put on an iron fly and the stock price makes a large, dire large movement in either direction and one of your spreads is entirely in the money at expiration, then you're going to realize your maximum loss potential on the strategy. So unfortunately, in this case, the trade did not work out. But the good news is that we have limited loss potential since we are short a call spread and short a put spread in this trade. So at expiration, since the short call and long call are both in the money, you wouldn't actually have to close the spread because those exercise and assignments would offset. So you wouldn't have a stock position after expiration but you should, you should be aware of the fact that if you let options expire in the money, you will incur exercise and assignment fees via your brokerage firm. So just be, be sure to know your fees before you let an option expire in the money. The worst case scenario is that you could just buy back that short call spread you know, 10 or 15 minutes before they expire, and you'll avoid those exercise and assignment fees. All right, example trade number three. We're going to look at a almost maximally profitable iron fly. So here is the setup. The initial stock price is $752 and to construct our iron fly we're going to sell the 750 put and the 750 call and then we're going to buy the 625 put and the 875 call. All of these options expire in 46 days. Now we're going to collect a credit of $66.15 which brings our break-even prices to $816.15 on the upside and $683.85 on the downside. So our maximum profit potential on this trade is going to be $6,615 and our maximum loss potential is going to be $5,885. So this is quite a large position, but let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, so as we can see here on the top part of the graph, we're looking at the stock price relative to the short iron fly components. And in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the actual price of that short iron fly. So as we can see here, the stock price starts right around $750 and immediately drops to our break-even price on the downside of $683.85. So obviously that's not ideal, but fortunately the stock price did rally back a little bit and was right below our short, our short strike at expiration. And as we can see, the iron fly did decay steadily over time, and as we can see, at expiration the spread was worth about $10. Now since we sold it for around $66, that would represent a profit of $56 per iron fly or around $5,600 per iron fly position. So this was a very, very profitable trade and that's because the stock price was between our break-even prices the entire time and it expired right near our short strike. So this is pretty much the best case scenario for a short iron fly position. All right, so let's go ahead and recap the main concepts that we've discussed in this video. So first of all, selling iron butterflies is a directionally neutral strategy that consists of selling an at-the-money call and put spread with the same short strike price. So it, you can either conceptualize it as a short call spread and a short put spread with the same short strike, or you can conceptualize it as a short straddle and a long strangle. Now the main profit drivers for short iron butterflies are the passage of time because the strategy has positive theta, and decreases in implied volatility since the strategy has negative vega. Now to close a short iron butterfly before expiration, you can simply buy back the short straddle and sell the long strangle to lock in profits or losses. Now though a short iron butterfly begins directionally neutral, the trade will become directional if the stock price trends in one direction. So always rem remember that you want the stock price to be right at your short strike, so if it increases to a value higher than your short strike, you're going to be slightly bearish because you'll have negative deltas. 
And if the stock price falls to a price below your short strike, you're going to be slightly bullish because you want the stock price to increase back to your short strike. Thank you for watching this video, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get all of our new YouTube videos as we come out with them. Also, feel free to check out our website at www.projectoption.com.